Oh, this is the the report that he is giving to old man Yama after this. Is he going to give him all that information, though? Hey, so our boy Ishin is going to be okay. Hey, he did what he could to save the situation. Because that mystery hollow was wild. How is everyone going to react, though? Oh my god, is he not going to say anything about Masaki? He's not going to mention that he saw Quincy. He's keeping quiet for his future baby mama. Oh, what a guy. He is keeping her a secret. Is he going to tell anybody as well? There must be more out there. Just goes to show how much of a kind heart that she actually has. She saw someone in trouble. She stepped into action just like our boy Ichigo would do. Yeah, didn't even, didn't even get any info. Didn't even get her number. Come on, my man. Oh, absolutely. Whoa. What was that? Oh, it's Orahara. She ran into Orahara at some point. And he senses whatever is going on there. That hollows like dark energy from when it was blown up and got destroyed. That darkness inside of her. Did that somehow get like passed on to Ichigo from that hollow when he was born? And now she's being questioned. Leave my girl Masaki alone. He broke the rules of the Soul Reapers and she broke the rules of the Quincy's. He is not happy with her. Oh, man. That she did. And it has left something behind. She's right. She's correct in this instance. And all she cares about is making sure that bloodline is pure. He can't risk anything. There was some doubt in his eyes there, though. Oh, there it is again. Oh my gosh, she just straight up passed out. It, it's done something to her. I don't know what. Oh my god. You are kidding me. It got absorbed into her. Is it going to low-key infect her and, and kind of turn her into her own hollow form like how Ichigo accessed his? And where is he going to try to go to save this? Something is not right. And he just has no idea what's happening. Man, I feel bad for, for Uryu's dad, though. Like, he feels like it's all his fault because he didn't interfere. What the heck? Why is this thing popping up? Is that a Menos? No, not quite. Maybe just a regular hollow. And Ishin is there to save the day. Return the favor. Back in the world of the living. How are they going to, like, cure her? Oh, come on. Don't do this, guys. At the end of the day, you both care about her. You got to put this childish stuff aside. You got to do whatever it takes to save her. Orahara. And he's just going to help them. No questions asked. Dude, Orahara is such a baller. Like, what a good freaking dude. That's why I love Orahara, though. He's just willing to step in and do whatever it takes. Like, he's not bound by these rules that really constrict these different societies. 
Oh, whoa. We get, like, an inside look at, like, what it feels like to be holified. Just enveloped by that darkness and loneliness. So creepy. Someone is waiting for her. Like, death swarm embrace. The inner hollow. This was after he was banished. That's crazy. He knows who he is. He's heard the stories. Oh, wow. It's just like Ichigo. Holification. She's going to have to train just like Ichigo. I mean, that's got to be my guess, right? Yep, the boundaries between the souls has been corrupted. But she is a Quincy. Wow, was she the first one that actually like got this treatment? Because this is before Shinji and all them. And at this point, you know, they're both going to want to do whatever it takes. Yup, injecting that into their soul to counteract the holification. Maintaining that balance. And my guess is, because this is going to keep her the way she is, and, you know, she's always going to have that hollow aspect to her, then Ryu is not going to want to go ahead and marry her and have kids with her and continue the bloodline because it'll be tainted then. They're going to end up rejecting her. But the fact that he had like a vaccine is crazy. Yep, that balancing force. Yep, you can already see. He's not, he's not happy about it. Oh man, he is breaking down. So he has to make the choice. Oh my god. He had to give up everything for her. That's why, that's why he's going to get expelled from the Soul Society. That's why he's going to leave. If he does nothing, she's just going to die and become a mindless hollow. Oh my god. This is insane. It'll be passed down. There it is. Any child that she has is going to have that same thing. He's never going to be able to be a soul reaper again. That's what happened. He did this all for her. Yo, that's heartbreaking. That's both so incredibly romantic and so incredibly heartbreaking. Bro, Ichigo's parents are like the best people in the world. He didn't even hesitate. He said, absolutely, I'm going to do it. <laughs> And he was just willing to do it. Wow. Ryu, I don't know if he would do that. I don't know if he would do it if he was in Ishin's position. And they're going to do it. Oh my god. Insane. Oh, look at the symbolism. He was there to save her. With the holification Riz, he's jumping in there. Like a, a knight in shining armor. Oh, he used the Getsuga Tensho. That's amazing. I'm so happy we're getting to see this. And he's going to be half and half himself. Their souls have been connected. But for him... For them, they failed. 
And maybe that's why he's as bitter as he is now. And that's something he's always going to have to live with. That he failed. And this is where they are going to carry on. She is incredibly devoted to him. Oh, when you're sad, I'm sad. Man, the emotional stakes. Bro, I was not ready for this. Come on now. Oh, we're fast forwarding in time. She left. Where did she go after that? There was no choice. And he opened up his clinic. Man, imagine going from ha being a soul reaper to just being a regular person. And that eventually became a relationship. They blossomed and became a family. But that was a lie. Did he never tell her the truth? Oh, I wish we got to see more of these two. They look like so sweet together, the way they kind of balance each other out. She was like the sun. She really was, wasn't she? She had that special presence. Lit up his entire world, man. This is so adorable. We're getting the love story I never knew I needed. He was born. Hearing this for the first time has got to be crazy for him to process. And it all makes sense because Quincy's absorbed Reishi and he absorbed Rukia's. Because of course he did, right? Because he's part Quincy deep down. Oh my god. And there's still stuff we don't know? Her death. Oh my god, is there something more? There has to be something more. How it happened. Oh, dude, come on. No freaking way. Another post credit scene. What really happened to her? What happened to her? Did she sacrifice herself? Act Quincy. That's right, so she would have had the Blute Vein as well. Obviously she could have defeated this thing. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense why she would die to this thing. She would have been way stronger. It stopped working! Her defense mechanism did not activate. She lost her powers. How do you lose your powers like that? What does that mean? A selection process. He takes their powers. She wasn't pure, so he... He stole them for himself. That's what his goal is. And he killed Uryu's mom too. That's what his goal is. He's, he's trying to keep that bloodline pure. So he's stealing Quincy powers. That's why he wants Ichigo. Because he is impure. Dude, Yuhavak is an absolute menace. Nah, this dude needs to be taken down. That is what his purpose is. Oh, all that conversation is going to come flooding back. Look at his eyes. He was finally ready to hear that. You guys, these episodes of Bleach Thousand Year Blood War literally keep getting better and better 
by the episode. It's so difficult for me not to just sit down here and just start watching these without even doing these reactions because I am so engrossed and so invested. This entire backstory has now been fully revealed to us. Masaki and her powers disappearing because of Yuhavak essentially using his system to steal powers from those who he believes are unpure for that Quincy bloodline. He's responsible for Ichigo's mother's death as well as Uryu's mother's death also. Like there's so many machinations at play and now Ichigo has the full picture. He has the full story and he's going to do whatever he can to try to stop and defeat Yuhavak. And I cannot wait to see it. I just don't know where he goes from here. I only have one episode left of the first core of Thousand Year Blood War, man. And it is going to be everything. I wish we got to see more from Ichigo's dad and Masaki because they looked so adorable together. Like you can tell how much he just loved her and how much he cared for her and how he held her in such high regards, you know, calling her the sun and, you know, she was her, she was his world really, really hits you deep, man. I didn't expect to, you know, feel like that, you know, watching these episodes of Bleach, but we are just getting so many different elements and it's been so amazing. Um, it's, it's just been awesome. Really goes to show what type of a person Ichigo's dad is. You know, he, he maintains that front of being all jokey-jokey and fun-loving. But when push came to shove, he was willing to completely leave his old life behind to try to save someone that he doesn't even really know. And that speaks volumes to me. And you can see why Ichigo is the way that he is. Because both of his parents kind of embodied that heroic you know, spirit willing to do whatever they can to protect others. And we're going to see him now try to do the same and stop Yuhavak, the Quincy King. But that'll do it for me in this one, you guys. If you guys enjoyed this episode, let me know what you thought of it down in the comment section down below. And as always, y'all, it would mean the world to me if you would like and subscribe as it would help out the channel a ton. But until next time, you guys, take care. Have yourselves a great day, everybody. Peace.